This is the Always More Podcast. Hello and hello. It is February 8th and welcome to the Always More Podcast, where we believe there's always more room at the table for honest questions, meaningful conversations, and deeper understanding. Today on the pod, we are talking about black history, fine dining, Cleveland, psychedelic frogs, and so much more. But first, I am your host, Christopher Thomas Ford. Sitting next to me is Tim Lichty, the man, the myth, the legend. Hello, hello. And sitting across from me, because we do everything digitally now in this modern age that I don't like, because <laughs> I'm a grumpy old man, is Harley Bianca. Woo! kids these days with their technology you and your computers and <laughs> hard drives and floppy disks that's definitely not my, my floppy age. Disk. i think we your stopped using Chris. floppy disks before you were actually born Ooh, that's crazy to think about isn't it it is it's insane do you, ever, love do you hear the story about the the i guess it was like a gen z kid or maybe even gen alpha i don't know that saw a floppy disk and was like, hey, somebody 3D printed the save, save. icon. <laughs> it's like, you son of a it's like, I've never hit a kid before. But... <laughs> All right. Well, oh, I'm excited to be here. Yes. Not dying of well, pneumonia I, anymore. I'm about to say, you've been gone for like, I mean, you were here for like the last official episode, but then we had Always More Nerd, which you were supposed to be a part of, but you didn't. Because I was dying. And then you didn't show up for the last episode. Also still dying. And yeah. So we're, we're glad you're here, I've Chris. been in and out of the hospital for like the past month and a half. Just because mm. it started with like a weird little virus that my daughter got that she passed to me, I think. And we just passed that back and forth for a while. So it was just like <laughs> kind of sick. But since I'm type 1 diabetic, anytime I get a little sick, it yeah. can go really bad really fast. So I ended up in DKA, which is diabetic shock. So I was in the hospital for that. While I was there for that, I ended up with pneumonia. So I've had pneumonia for like the past month. That was pneumonia. fun. My favorite part of having pneumonia is that Janelle was like, "Hey, you just need to get up and stretch, and you'll be fine. Like, you, you need to you need to walk it off, basically." You're right. Just like you're you're just being a baby. Come to find out, no, I was dying. So you know that's always fun. Well, we're glad you're here, and happy belated birthday, my friend. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Wait, like are it you- was on the first. So now I am 31 years old. 31. Okay. I couldn't yeah. remember if it was your 30 or 31st. So. Yeah. Gotcha. 31. Seasoned. Two years closer mm. to Jesus' age. When he mm. died. Yep. I don't, I don't know what that, what that means, <laughs> but there you go. That's it. All right. Oh, That's man. enough of that B-roll <laughs> banter, I guess. Edit, edit out or don't edit out? I don't know. Nah, You'll don't, hear. We'll figure it out. out. We'll, we'll, leave, we'll leave it for the Let's for talk the about people. death. We'll see what to edit that out. I like talking about death. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's the only thing that unites all of us. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and jump right on into our Rec and Rev. It's part of the show where we recommend and review a few things that we may have seen or that you guys may not have heard of. Um, I will go ahead and start this one with a new movie that I recently saw called The Menu. Ooh. Yeah, so this one is on HBO Max Plus, whatever they call it. I, I don't know. The, the HBO streaming service. Plus squared. I have plus squared exponents. It's PEMDAS. <laughs> HBO PEMDAS. Um, so it's about a young couple that travels to a remote island to eat at an exclusive restaurant where the chef has prepared a lavish menu with some shocking surprises. First and foremost, let me tell you that that meal was $1,200 per oh. person. Rich people make me mad. <laughs> yeah. Each individual meal? <laughs> The well per person you go and it's one meal like you have the chef makes this coursed out menu and like it he's like a world renowned chef he's like the number one chef in the world and everybody wants to eat his food it's like Gordon Ramsay and Bobby Flay and everybody else had a baby and they made this one chef I don't know <laughs> um, but it stars Anya Taylor Joy Ralph Fiennes Nicholas Holt. Um, John Leguizamo's in this movie, which is always one of my favorite characters in any movie he's ever been in. He's just the best. Um, so basically, they go to this island. They enjoy this crazy meal that's stupid expensive. Mm. But it's like one of those pretentious meals because he gives them a breadless bread plate. <laughs> God. Which is essentially <laughs> just like butter and oil and the spreadable stuff that you would find with a bread plate, but no bread. <laughs> 
Mm. Um, it, and he, he gives him like laser printed tortilla tacos at one point. Oh my God. <laughs> but like all of these people are there specifically for a reason. The chef invites them and it, it gets really crazy. It's actually a horror suspense movie, not just like a food movie. Which mm-hmm. caught me off guard because I was not expecting that. Oh, really? First, you didn't know? Not when I first picked it out. I was like, "Hey, let's watch this." <laughs> That's the only reason why I'm hesitant on it. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't super bad. Um, it, it's more like one of those psychological thrillers mm, than, than gotcha. anything. Um, but it does. It does have some uh, some parts in it mm-hmm. that you may not want to see if you're a younger viewer. Mm. Um, now, being part of the chefy world, being married to a chef, I can tell you, though, that there are genuinely people like that in the chef world, in reality. They are actually that pretentious. Yeah. And they're just the worst. <laughs> see, what what makes me upset about, like, anything that's expensive is, like, things are only expensive as much as meaning we give to them. Like, that's it. Yeah. Like, gold is only expensive because we put value on it. Yeah. It's not rare. It's not like it's, you know, like you can't find it. Like we're, we're, we got plenty of gold. And so like with food, it's like the same thing. Like the value of something like an ingredient is only because whether it's rare, like isn't saffron or saffron yeah, rare? It, it, it's difficult to gather. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, there's not that much out there that is incredibly rare. So you, you get a $1,200 plate. That pisses me off. <laughs> it's it's about the experience, and he makes sure that they know that they're paying for the experience. the The crazy thing about it is, like, every at at the end, everybody's pissed off. They all hate what's about to happen. They all know what's going to happen. He's told them what's about to happen, and then he's like, "I need you all to pay before this." Oh my god! <laughs> so they all just like, "Damn it!" And they're like pulling out their cards and like paying for the stuff. And none of them are happy. Literally not one person there is happy. But you can see, like, they're all like, I guess we got to pay for this anyway. It's pretty funny. Mm, okay. So check that movie out. The okay. Menu. The Menu. Cool. cool. Harley, you're next. My thing is not a film. Um, it's actually a object that you can use, and it's a milk frother. Um, <laughs> I bought mine from a local grocery store up here called Dylan's, And basically it looks like this. Oh, you actually got it. Nice. Yeah. I have three um, milk frothers in my house, and yeah, I love them. They're qu- amazing. <laughs> it just makes the experience of, like, having coffee and all that just so much more enjoyable, especially if you put, like, creamer or milk and stuff I, in there. I literally put a um, uh, milk frother in Janelle's creamer every morning before I give her her coffee. Like, I froth it up and pour it on top of the coffee. She loves it. Yes. Yes. It's just, it's the little things in life. You know what I mean? Harley, I'm asking this because I, I had the same experience, but is this like the first time you've discovered this? Like a milk frother? Okay. No, I have known they have, have existed. Okay. My old roommate <laughs> had one, but I didn't really use it because it wasn't mine. But now I have one. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> this is dope. Because that happened to me like a few years ago. Like, what is this contraption? And I've never seen it used before because, you know, white family. So it was just like, you know, I never, <laughs> never needed it really. And so I, I discovered it. I was like, oh, oh, this is kind of nice. I like this. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty groovy. Um, and it, it, like I said, it... It does the fancy stuff that you can get at, like, you know, a coffee shop, but, like, at home. Right. Yeah. Also, it's not just for milk. You can froth anything. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I've only used it for milk. What else can you froth? Uh, Mostly, it it, it mostly has to be, like, a creamy-based thing. So, like, you can froth chocolate, like hot chocolate. (gasps) Um, You can froth, like, (laughs) certain juices. I mean, wow. really, you can froth anything. It just won't stay frothy. Interesting. Also, that sounds it's a delightful. fun word to say, froth. Froth. Yeah, the more I say it, the more it sounds fake. Oh, but <laughs> matcha, that's like, you know, uh, that's yeah, good. Yeah, Froth matcha. That's good stuff. Good stuff. But yeah, um, get, get you one of these. Um, <laughs> it's pretty good. I think it was like $10. Yeah, they're not even and I super think, expensive. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, some people get theirs with, like, they come with like a little stand for it. Mine did not. Um, so that's a bit disappointing. But, uh, yeah, you can get on, like, Amazon, go to Walmart. I'm sure Walmart has one. Yeah. But who uh, who really goes to Walmart that much anymore? I feel like yeah. Walmart's become, like, Denny's. You don't go there. You just end up there. Yeah. <laughs> if you, like, really Nobody sets something. out to go to Walmart. It just happens. Yeah. 
However, I do use oat milk or like an oat creamer. Oh, yeah. Same. So it does like to uh, curdle in my coffee, which kind of makes me want to die. But um, that helps. Yeah. It adds a little texture to the <laughs> coffee. If I like you will. a little chunk in my coffee. <laughs> yeah. You know what this coffee could use? <laughs> Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. But, was it, but that's like people put butter in their coffee and stuff like that. That's a whole other topic of conversation. Wow. That is what I recommend. That's what milk that, frother. That's what we need to have Janelle back on for is to talk about like this really like obscure food things that people do or like things that like like me like I'm just a white middle class dude who hasn't experimented much with food. So like hearing like little things that are like commonplace in other places, but you know would be interesting. Like. Butter, because I've heard that before. Butter mm-hmm. with like coffee or something, and it's just super mm-hmm. bizarre. But I'm sure there's other things that she's aware of. Oh yeah, yeah. She, you she ever knows had a lot. beans on toast? That, yeah, that's, a, that's an English thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's so strange. Uh, oh man. All right. Uh, mine. Okay, guys. I watched a film that I wanted to watch last year, but I couldn't get around to it. Chris, you're dying again. Stop. <laughs> Pneumonia, dying stuff. Sorry. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> He's I'm not cutting that out. <laughs> Banshees of Inishirin. Um, It's a film that I wanted to watch last year. Couldn't. Um, it, it is. Here's the synopsis. Two lifelong friends find themselves at an impasse when one abruptly ends their relationship with an alarming consequences for both of them. This film is a lot like. It's like a. It's a calm suspense thriller. And I don't know how to explain it. Because it makes you feel uneasy throughout the whole film. There is some like bigger-ish moments that happen in the film, but it's not like a thriller, like the menu. Like, I can tell that's just different. Like, here's here's a here's a, um, a review from, uh, what's her name? Let me make sure I say it. Carrie? Uh, Clara. Carrie. Clara Curtis. <laughs> um, she said, as someone whose anxiety often manifests into, ooh, your best friend hates you, the Banshees of Inishirin felt unnervingly terrifying at times. The film is an immensely impressive display of a bidding, biting wit and vulnerability complex depiction of the most p- uh, painful parts of friendship. Um, Farrell and Gleason, who are the main two main dudes on screen together, acting their darkness and just makes sense. What a grand time to be alive. Um, yeah, the, the film is fantastic. It's incredibly well acted. It is a, it is not like an action film by any stretch of the means, but it is deep, it is meaningful, and if you have a best friend and you fear losing them, this will give you all kinds of anxiety. So not um, watching that then. Got it. <laughs> Uh, but is insanely good, and I really enjoyed it. So See, here's the thing: if you already have anxiety about that, <laughs> why would you want to make it worse? But you don't have to fear that with me. Like you're stuck with me, dude. Like I, I fear the other way around. Yeah, but that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Banshees of I'm not even pronouncing it right. I'm probably sure in, in a Sharon. It's actually a fake island in the film. But there's a chain of islands around Ireland that are named something similar to that. So it's like it's supposed to be around there. But yeah. Oh, I don't know if you could catch it, but they're Irish. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Irish. The Irish. I can't do it. Yeah, I don't think I could watch that. Yeah. I'm. I'm. Because then I'd have to tell Kenzie. I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. not even words, just sobs. I fully understand that, and agree with you. All right. All right. Well, that is our Wreck and Rev for the week. Hey, hey. So let's slide into our next one. And I'm not going to be able to do this, so I'm, I'm going to need one of y'all to handle this. All right, Harley. You're doing this. What am I doing? You know what you're doing. The next segment. Come on. You got this. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <coughs> Ready? Yeah. What did I miss? Yes. Yay. Yeah. Over the interwebs. I hope the Interweed. timing works out for that. Because, you know, there's <laughs> I think always you that, totally like, could have done delay. It. No, with the pneumonia. I think you it, it underestimate off, yourself. It would have set off. You could have like whispered a, it. You could have made it really different. Coughing fit. <laughs> yeah. He, like, starts having a coughing fit immediately after. <laughs> I have been, like, fighting a massive coughing fit this entire time. That little one that I had a second ago is, like, nothing compared to what I've been going through. Anyway, this is the part of the show where we like to present you with some... Sorry. This is the part of the show where we like to present you with some news that you probably didn't hear about, starting with Tim. Kids, say no to toads. I always do. 
Say no <laughs> to toads. You guys remember like the dare program back in school? Did you have that, Harley? Oh, yeah. I did. Only for a brief moment. I feel like it just pushed people towards drugs. Absolutely. Uh, if I wasn't asthmatic, I probably would have. But um, <laughs> they're like, hey, kids, don't smoke these drugs. They're going to send you on a crazy trip. You'll see <laughs> stuff that you've never seen. You'll do all kinds of fun things. You'll go places, meet interesting people. Don't do it. Well, now I want to. <laughs> Uh, okay, so according to Samira Ozma, I'm so sorry, I'm mispronouncing this, Sadiq, Sadiq, uh, at The Guardian, the U.S. National Park Service is warning people to stop licking one of the largest toads in America due to a toxin <laughs> it secretes from its glands that can create a hallucin hallucinogenic experience. You see? Um MPS warned in a Facebook post that the Sonoran Desert Toad, which has a brief, quote, weak, low-pitched toot, might make you feel sick if you touch or taste it. The toad, commonly known as the Colorado River Toad, is about seven inches long and glands close to its eyes and jaw discharge poisons into its surroundings. Um, yeah, this toad is uh, it's uh, poisonous, but... You it's out to get us. Get high off it. It's not, not bad poison, it doesn't sound like. <laughs> well, okay, so according to Arizona, uh, yeah, Arizona Sonora Desert Museum, animals who harass this species often are intoxicated through the mouth, nose, or eyes with a specific warning for dog owners to keep their pets safe. And all those secretions of these toads can occasionally be used uh, therapeutically to treat abnormal heartbeats. This must be done on a controlled setting under close supervision. Sounds like they just want to control everybody. <laughs> So despite the dangers, uh, toad looking has evolved into a recreational drug and has long been condemned as potentially fatal. Not all toads can produce a high, and those that can, each toad produces a different high. The recognized results of so this... try them all, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Lick every toad. The, re the recognized result of this activity includes euphoria and hallucinations, but can also result in anxiety, nausea, seizures, and extreme cases death it would be much preferred by the park staff if individuals quit doing it <laughs> quote as we say uh, with most most things you come across in the national park whether it be a banana slug unfamiliar mushroom or a large toad with glowing eyes in the dead of night please refrain from licking <laughs> fun suckers but like t t oh my god <laughs> to be fair there are very venomous uh, and poisonous frogs out there that if you do lick it you will die yeah but not here no, that's a good question. Are there any poisonous, like, are, are there any deadly frogs in North America? I mean, all frogs are deadly if they try hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> Have any of you guys ever tried to lick a frog before? Yes. Absolutely not. I don't even pick up frogs. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. It's so gross. You licked a frog? I tried. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> What do you couldn't, mean you tried? You were unsuccessful? Yeah. <laughs> Come back here. Couldn't catch one. <laughs> <laughs> the one time I was like, I'm going to do this, I couldn't catch a frog. Um, I think that was the universe telling you don't lick this frog. <laughs> yeah, probably. But here's the thing about me. I don't care. Mm. Yep. Oh, look, here is here is a green and black poisonous dart frog that if you, yeah, it, you die. You die from this thing. But where is it? Uh, it is Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and the Pacific Coast. So California, places like that. Maybe. We, look, we don't know who I this imagine is. I imagine it's like an organ. You know, the Pacific Ocean <laughs> also includes the South America, right? Right, but I looked up North America. All right. All right. It's just in the United States. Maybe it just means in zoos. You turd nugget. All right, next up. All right, so the next story, I guess I will do. Um, Yale honors the work of a nine-year-old black girl whose neighbor reported her to the police. What? Yeah, this, this story is infuriating, but it has a nice ending. <laughs> okay. Uh, nine-year-old Bobby Wilson may be in fourth grade, but last month Yale School of Public Health had a ceremony honoring the budding scientist's recent work. I really love it when, like, just normal people, like, with power and prestige, like, come up to back people like this and do yeah, things. Yeah, it's always nice to see stuff like that. It's like, no, you're in the wrong, you pain in the ass. Yeah, so the <laughs> uh, Yale University entered Bobby's collection of 27 spotted lantern flies, which is an extremely invasive species that is harmful to trees and other plants, into the Peabody Museum of Natural History database. She was presented with the title of donor scientist during a January 20th ceremony. Oh, um, that's dope. Yeah, right? Like, 
this is a nine year old girl whose work is now forever enshrined in the natural history museum. That's awesome. Of life. Um, life. And now this does come, <laughs> it comes three months after Bobby, who is black, made headlines when former Caldwell Borough Council member Gordon Losh, Loshe, whatever, who is I'm white, sh- I'm sure called it's not local police that, on the girl. Um, there was a, the police call is on CNN, you can find it. Uh, but basically, the person called in and said, there's a little black woman walking, spraying stuff on the sidewalk and trees on Elizabeth and Florence, which are streets in that area, um, according to the call, which, again, CNN has. Uh, he said, I don't know what the hell she's doing. Scares me, though. And what called the, the police freak? on a nine-year-old little girl. Called and her, called her a called woman? Called her a little woman, which is upsetting in and of itself right. that black people are never just allowed to be kids. Yeah. They're yeah. always young men or young women. Never just like, hey, this is a boy. This is a girl. These are kids just doing. And the crazy thing is the reason she was spraying the trees is because she had just learned about the invasive species, the lanternflies, through her state's Stomp It Out campaign, which she learned about in school where Jersey, uh, New Jersey residents are – asked to help eradicate the spotted lantern fly infestation. So basically she figured out how to make a uh, insecticide bug repellent type thing. And she was spraying trees in the neighborhood doing exactly what they told her to do in school. <laughs> and some rando called the police and was like, yeah, I don't know what they're doing, but this little black woman is terrifying me. Little black woman. Oh my God. Just, just by being black. Can't do nothing in America. But like I said, it does have a happy ending. So the police showed up. Obviously, they talked to her. She got real scared. She was like, oh, am I in trouble? They're like, no, no, we just we have to follow up because somebody called the cops. Uh, but how many trees did you save? How many bugs have you stomped out? And, you know, it was a nice positive interaction. Mm. Obviously, it could have gone very badly. Yeah. And it's kind of one of those things like it's even though it did end up well, it's still kind of something that's going to stick with her forever. It's a traumatic event. So because yeah. of that, the scientific community in the area has rallied around her, basically. Um, aside from Yale giving her the award and putting her stuff in the museum, she's been in contact with professors, scientists. Um, they brought her in, her and her sister, so that they could meet other black female scientists at Yale. Um, they've given her books and gifts and awards and all kinds of stuff for the sole fact that they don't want her to lose her love for STEM. Oh which Aww. I think is so amazing and beautiful. It's really nice to see a community gather around somebody like that when something awful happens. So That's you know, really sweet. Aside from, you know, the whole situation occurring in the first yeah, place. A, the, a council member yeah. for that neighborhood, by the way. And come to find out, she had actually lived across the street from this person for 10 years. <gasps> you, know, you know how this can be resolved? Her entire life, like he, she has lived across the street from this person. He could have just as easily... Gotten out of his house, because I, I bet you 20 bucks he didn't do this. That he could have just gotten out of his house and said, hey, what are you doing? Just ask. Just talk. Just or, have a conversation. Or he could have done nothing and just minded his <laughs> own damn business <laughs> and <laughs> just shut up. Well, like if he was Is it s- affecting you? It's a nine-year-old girl spraying insecticide on a tree. Right. It's actually benefiting him. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like Even if he was concerned about someone doing something malicious— how about you just take the benefit of the doubt and just go ask first? Like, that's that's my point. It's just like, it's none of his business. But if he really was concerned, if that was his, if that was his genuine concern, which I don't believe it, it was. It wouldn't have happened if she were white. No. No, absolutely not. 100%. <sighs> but it is what it is. The positive just, side is that people are rallying around her. That's good. Yeah. So, there you go. Woo! <laughs> go, Bobby. Yes. Harley. Bobby, best girl. Okay, so mine is about the golden age for non-alcoholic beers, wines, and spirits. No, I'm out for this. (laughs) He's actually leaving. Tim, Tim, please. (laughs) Tim. What is the point of (laughs) non-alcoholic beer, wine, and spirits? What what even is a non-alcoholic spirit? What does that mean? Why? Because. Because some people have problems with alcoholism, and you really want them to continue to suffer? No, No, but but I also don't (laughs) understand. Sounds insensitive to me. I don't understand non-alcoholic spirits. 
Some people just like the taste of alcohol, but they don't like the effects. Okay. All right. That's why it exists I, in the first yes. place. Fair, fair. But it, it's not good. Have you had them? <laughs> Non-alcoholic beers, wines, and spirits? I have not because I'm not interested, I've but not, I think it's a great thing. I've not had non-alcoholic spirits because, again, that confuses me. But <laughs> wines and beers, they're not typically good. Anyway, sorry. Go on with your go on with your story. I mean, I've had like sparkling juice. That's some, like non-alcoholic, but got, it's still like you know. You got some violence you know. in you today, Chris. <laughs> I do. I'm sorry. It's Black History. He's got something to say about everything that I say. <laughs> it's not just you. It's Tim too. <laughs> okay, so there is craft non-alcoholic IPAs, Kentucky seventy four spiritless bourbon, Monday zero alcohol. Zero alcohol gin, Luminar alcohol removed Chardonnay, and zero proof margaritas. Those are some examples of some things that exist. I might be able to get behind a zero proof margarita. Yeah, because it's fruity. But I don't understand right. the bur- spiritless bourbon. There's just like a big boom right now in these in mocktails. Do you know what a mocktail is? Yes, yeah, yes. Janelle makes mocktails for Tyler all the time. Yeah, and it's just like... The concept of this, like, you know, fin- and it, but it's still got a little twang to it. Fin- finish the story because I have some opinions, but you probably might answer them. Okay. So the business <laughs> of non-alcoholic beer, wine, and spirits is booming, obviously. Um, in the last year, more than 70 new items have been launched in this space as consumers seek out health and wellness alternatives in their drinking routines. Wow. Says Kylie Theralt, I believe is how you pronounce her name, a representative from... Nielsen Q, a data analytics company. So NQ's, I'm not going to try and pronounce it again. Um, NQ's data shows that the market for non-alcoholic beer, wine, and spirits grew more than 20% in the last year and more than 120% over the last three years. Um, they have accumulated about $400 million in annual sales in the last year, um, which is compared to the roughly $200 billion with like alcohol beverages. Wow. So it's pretty big. Yeah. I mean, so. yeah, that's that's a good chunk. That, yeah. It's, it, there's just like a more of a movement towards like, you know, alcohol kills your liver, which in turn yeah. kills you. <laughs> I guess. So people are just not big fans of that anymore with this like whole actual like health thing. That's not just like dieting and like to me it just pills sounds like to get on. getting soft. <laughs> But also because I think it's a big thing in, like, mental health development yeah, because people realize that having, like, alcoholism is a big deal and um, addiction runs in, like, families. Look, you treat an outside like, wound with rubbing alcohol. You treat an inside wound with drinking alcohol. That's the only thing I know to be true. You should talk to your therapist. I'm working on that. <laughs> Sounds good. It, look, I'm not against it. Like, if it's for good reasons or for whatever reasons, like, you do you, obviously. But it's like, it, it, see, with, like, mocktails and, like, margaritas, like, that makes sense to me because it's, like... It's, it's still delicious. Yeah, it's it's fruity. It's going to be that way. But with, like, bourbons and spirits, like, that is a very specific taste that it is very dependent on you alcohol know, in my I'm, brain. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and just apply something that I use in most of my life, and that's... I'm going to mind my business. It's not for me. <laughs> it's not for me. And I'm not going to yuck somebody else's yum. If you like it, good. Right, right. No, me, me, me. I don't get it, but do you? I would like to point out that um, I think we've talked about this briefly in the past, but um, history ha- has basically shown us that we were, have always been drunks in America, in American history. Like, I, I found the stat... Even after factoring in the abstainers, Americans were consuming 1.7 bottles of standard 80-proof liquor per person per week. This was in the 1800s. Mm. Can you imagine that today? Yes. (laughs) That would be glorious. That Uh, sounds like a good time. Well. All right, guys. It doesn't sound like a good time to me, quite frankly, because as someone who's been drunker than shit a lot in my life my dad since calls I've it been... cuda brown drunk all your fake oh pee. yeah drunker um, than cuda brown I don't it's even know not what that means. a good feeling <laughs> it's just not and the after effects are even worse so i think it's kind of cute that they're doing like this whole movement of like non-alcoholic things but good obviously if you still like alcohol 
drink your shit. No one's gonna care. <laughs> like, as long as you're but, doing it legally and safely. They're coming after my Bud Light. Nobody yeah, wants Yeah, and it's not light. like they're getting rid of alcohol. This isn't prohibition times two. <laughs> Nobody you know wants what I mean? Bud Light. You don't want your Bud Light. <laughs> but you know there are people that will read this kind of article, and they, it, that's exactly where their brain is going to go. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah. they're trying to take away my Budweiser, my Bud First light. of all, the guns, now my beer. <laughs> right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway, before, like before they, like, this gets even the age more for, political. Like, do you remember when they raised the age for smoking? And everybody was like, oh, you can't take away my cigarettes. Better, better. You yeah, remember that? Yeah. yeah. It was mostly a bunch of like 40 year old men that had no effect on that were mad about uh, it. Yes. Yeah. So I can definitely see that being a thing. But like, even when I worked at my bar, there was this really old guy. His name was Rudy. And he'd come in and have his little cranberry juice and he'd have a non alcoholic beer. Call it a day. Huh. Good for him. Yeah. And I, I just think it reaches a point where some people are just like, I don't want to get hammered all the time anymore. Yeah. I just want to enjoy it, enjoy the taste of it. And it's also great for people who are hammered, but still are like, give me another beer. And you're like, here you go. <laughs> Have this non-alcoholic one. You won't Sober know the difference. Up. Here's this Odul's. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what it is? Odul's? Odul's is one. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, I think that's enough for our, uh, our intro. We're going to head off to a short break. We will be right back in just a minute to continue with our main topic. Thank you all for listening to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe and leave a rating on your favorite podcast platform and YouTube. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at, at AlwaysMorePod. If you'd like to ask us a question for us to answer on the pod, you can email us at AlwaysMorePodcast at gmail.com. Or you can call us on our Always More hotline and leave a voicemail question at 254-218-4042. You can also follow all of our social medias individually and as the Always More podcast. Thanks for listening. Let's get back to it. Welcome back from that short, brief break where we are no longer being paid for our commercials. <laughs> It is Black History Month, and we wanted to take the time this month to discuss a few aspects and conversations about the black history, as well as introduce our first new episode genre, Always More News. Yes. Yeah, we talked about Woo! that. Well, I didn't talk about it. You guys talked about it yeah, last time. Left um, us. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so today dying. we He's will forgiven. bring up at least two articles of news stories, things like that, and kind of dissect them a little bit, uh, specifically this month focusing on black history. Because, as you all know, it is February, Amen. Black History Month. And we are going to start off with an article by Aaron Blakemore titled, Why February is Black History Month. You guys know? Do you know the story of this? I, I know it now that I've read it. <laughs> <laughs> now that we put I didn't, the notes I, I, in and I didn't prior. did a whole episode on it, yeah. Yeah, so Black History is mainly celebrated around February in the U.S. and also across the whole world, um, specifically to focus on the advancements, the contributions of black people to American culture and uh, global culture as far as the positives. Um, obviously, there are negatives in every culture, but this is to focus on the positives of black history because they weren't given a lot to start with. No. And they went, they went pretty far with what they had. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this one starts off in the early 20th century with historian named Carter G. Woodson. Uh, he was pretty upset at the world's silence on black achievement. Again, early 20th century. That's 1900s, just so you guys are on the same page. The early mm -hmm. 1900s. Um, one of my one of my uh, my nibblings is what I call them. My niece and nephew. Uh, they pointed out that. All of us were born in the 1900s. <laughs> oh, it was no. really upsetting. <laughs> you little piece of <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, um, Woodson wanted the world to know about the complexity of the historical lives of people of African descent. Uh, so, the son of a formerly enslaved parents who could not read 
Woodson struggled to obtain an education. He was born in Virginia, worked on a family farm and in West Virginia coal mines throughout his youth, only received sporadic schooling, and it took him until his 20s to attend high school. Man, coal mines. Shit. <laughs> Bro, he was 20-something before he could start attending high school. That's yeah. what gets me. Uh, but he went on to study abroad and eventually earned a doctorate in history from Harvard. Man, so, that's awesome. I, it, it may have taken yeah, him a while, dude. but he's super qualified. Yeah. Um, over time, Woodson became convinced that the world needed a better understanding of black people's contributions to society to counter racist misconceptions and mispercep- misperceptions about their abilities and aspirations. So in his book, The Miseducation of the Negro, he wrote that the Negro has not been educated. He has merely been informed about other things which he is not permitted to do. Oof. Mm, wow. That's good. Which is, in my opinion, still happening today. Yeah. Uh, um, in 1915, as a nation celebrated the 50th anniversary of the emancipation of enslaved peoples at the end of the Civil War, uh, Juneteenth specifically, would... Woodson took action. He founded an organization now known as the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, ASALH, aimed to spread knowledge of black history. So operating with little support and less money, Woodson and his colleagues created a first-of-its-kind display about black history and accomplishments at the Exposition of Negro Progress, which was an event in Chicago designed to celebrate the anniversary of the slavery's abolition, they also launched the first academic journal on the subject, now known as the Journal of African American History. Uh, can, That's really can, cool. Can I interlude here a little bit to to, yeah. to put some backdrop to all this? Black people during this time were it, everything. I mean, it still is, but like everything is literally against them at this point. Oh yeah, no, oh, this yeah. this is before the civil rights movement. <clears throat> yeah, this is 1920s. Like people are still very, very, very overtly racist. Yeah. Like. They're doing all of this stuff and avoiding being lynched at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, and obviously it, it's Chicago, so it's not like down south in Alabama where it's like you go outside and all of a sudden you're hung from a tree. Right. But it's still dangerous. Yeah. It, it's still yeah, the bad. risk is still there. Yeah. Society is not for you. Exactly. They had to do all of this against the grain. Um, in 1920, he encouraged his Omega Psi Phi fraternity brothers to begin observing a week that celebrated black literature and history. In 1926, he took over the celebration of what he called Negro History Week and began observing it every February, specifically to coincide with the birthdays of abolitionist Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. Uh, this week was also dedicated to black current events, art, literature, and music. So not just history, mm-hmm. but anything going on with black people, black culture, anything that had a positive impact on the world as it is or as it's going to be, they wanted to celebrate it, which is always great. Yeah, that's really cool. So unfortunately, in 1950, Woodson died. But the history education that he had fought so hard to ensure continued to spread on a grassroots level, just like everything else black people Mm. have to do, uh, fueling the civil rights movement. Black history became a huge part of education at freedom schools, which I don't know if you guys are aware of that. It's kind of like an alternative school set up by the community Mm. that taught them civil rights, that taught them the true history of America, that taught black people that taught black people essentially because yeah. they weren't allowed to get a full on education anywhere else. Right. So mm. these, these are like community schools that they had to go to, which are still being used nowadays. Um, Colin Kaepernick is the most recent person to be uh, famous for setting up one. Oh, the, the know your rights campaign. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's essentially the same thing. Oh, awesome. Um, so freedom schools had that as part of their education. And in 1975, president Gerald Ford, no relation, unfortunately, acknowledged it in an official message honoring the week, calling it the most appropriate to set aside a week to recognize the black contributions to American life and culture. Mm. The following Mm. year, uh, the organization that he had founded, the ASALH, expanded Black History Week to the entire month of February in recognition of the nation's bicentennial. So 1976. Um, The month-long celebration continued each year until 1986, so 10 years of black people just being like, nah, we're doing this all month, (laughs) when Congress Mm. finally passed a law officially designating February as National Black History Month or Afro-American Month. Mm. 
Awesome. Yes. Now we That's know really cool. a little more. Yeah. So there's there's your reasoning as to why it's in February. Chris, I want to ask you a question, and you don't have to answer it if you don't like. Did, oh, I know. Did you grow up celebrating Black History Month? I grew up observing Black History Month, but it wasn't celebrated in my house. Um, and not for racist reasons that are not overtly racist reasons anyway. Um, it just was not part of the culture I grew up with. I Like I said a while back, I am just now as an adult linking up with my black side culture, like learning more about it, learning the history, learning the current events, everything going on. Um, so, yeah. All right. Fascinating. Yeah, I just That's remember. Cool. I just there was a large part of. And I remember it kind of really stemmed in the late '90s, if I'm not mistaken, of Christian leaders, and that's why I kind of asked: Is there's this this pursuit of colorblindness of like, okay, we don't recognize it. Yeah. If we don't move mm. past it, if we just ignore it, if we keep talking about it, it'll just keep getting worse. Basically, that was the premise. And it's it, still a thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but that was definitely a big thing in the 90s that I remember mm-hmm. of just like, okay, we, 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 the more we talk about it, the worse it's going to get. Yeah, I still get comments like that from family members and people that I've known my entire life that are like, well, I don't see color. Or if we just stop talking about it, everything will be fine. Not everything's about race. Race isn't even real. We're all just a human race. I'm like, yeah, wow, <laughs> brother. <laughs> Look, race isn't real, but racism is. Right. Well, it's I just the effects of racism are one hundred percent real. Absolutely. Well, it's even the same. It's a similar parallel with classes, like with being rich and, and the poor. Like rich people can say all day to one another, uh, "If we're just gonna keep talking about it, it's just gonna make the thing worse." Like, no, you, you can do things to change the disparities between the mm-hmm. higher class and the lower classes. Just takes a little yeah. bit of effort. Yeah, and so it, it's just it's a it's a false assumption. I'm not assumption, but. I, that too, but it's just it's just mind blowing to me that people can just like nah, just ignore it, just go live. It's yeah. Like no, there there's suffering going on, yeah. and you're not aware of it. So. A lot of people don't have the option to ignore it. Right, like, it's a very privileged thing to be able to say, oh, let's not talk about it. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And it's also like a big thing for people to like. It makes them really uncomfortable because they know that they're wrong, but they're just like, no, 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 everything was fine. Like, <laughs> you know, we don't need to talk about it. Or you know, yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah, I recently got into a um, just a sidebar for a second. I got into a, a, a Instagram debate with some some random dudes, and it was the post was it was a picture of the uh, how how each state voted in like the past I don't know ten elections twenty elections, and you can see Harley I'm, as I'm sure you're aware especially you can see here like beginning around the sixties. Some of those states that are on the bottom, the southern states, start turning red, and yeah. it becomes more prominent. Of course, like I think in the later seventies and eighties is when it becomes pretty predominant. But it just kind of shows, like no, there was a culture shift and a party mm-hmm. switch, and yeah. it's just there's this deep history that most people. The reason why I'm saying is because people just aren't aware that there is these huge fundamental shifts in histories that we're not talking about that we think don't exist. Um, yeah. And it's important to recognize it because people will say, oh, see, it was the Republicans uh, who 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 got rid of slavery. It's like, well, it was it was they not, were actually Democrats. They, they weren't they weren't conservatives. <laughs> Let me say yeah. it like that. And so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. But you can't have that discussion with people. <laughs> no, they, they don't want to hear it. No. Shall we move along? Yeah, let's uh, let's jump into the next one. All right. Um, so this is from usafacts.org, published on February 9th, 2022. So it's a year old, but a lot of stuff is still very closely, you know, close. Uh, but it's an article titled, Here are 10 Facts for Black History Month. Um, so before they kind of get into the 10 facts, this is something they say. Before the 10 facts, they state that more than 12% of the American population identified as black or African American uh, in 2020. So data from the five government entities shows that on average, black Americans are more likely to be in a union than the general U.S. population voted at higher rates in 2020 and than in 2016, make up for a greater share of Congress than ever before. And here are 10, ten facts to uh, for a data snapshot of this U.S. population. Um, all right, number one, the black or African-American population was 39.9 million people 
in 2020. That's 12% of the 331.4 million people living in the United States that year. So that's the fact, but I want to provide some context to that fact. With that 12% in mind, that's the population, um, here's another percentage. This is according to Prison Policy Initiative. Um, Percent of people in prison or in jail who are black is 38% or more. And in a percent of people serving life or life without parole or virtual life sentences or who are black is 48%. It's mm, a big, that's big a cut. huge. There are people that will look at that and be like, well, you know, they're the ones committing the crime, but they're not like they're If you look at crime rates, not convictions, crime right, rates, right. It, it's actually higher in mostly white neighborhoods. Yeah the types of violent crimes that should end up with people on death row happen way more in mostly white states without big cities, like rural states. Mm -hmm. There was a uh, report that came out, like you're 12 times more likely to be violently murdered in a red state than in Mm -hmm. a blue state. Even if you take out all the big cities of the red states and still compare it to the big cities of the blue states, it's like four times more likely. Yeah, didn't that just come out? That that Yeah, that, it just came out. Not, yeah. So what this proves is that they are policed at a higher rate. Mm-hmm. They receive mm-hmm. higher sentences and they are convicted whether justfully or not, mostly not at higher rates than other races. Yeah. And this was even proved in a like a social setting. Like it, it was a few years ago, but they came out with a a, a study where they they questioned and they followed preschool teachers or like kindergarten teachers and at a higher rate, they would discipline uh, black students more than they would white <gasps> students mm-hmm. and not, not, Whoa. not consciously. Like they just, they would, they would, they would put a, on the screen, they would put like a, a video of like a classroom of kids and they would ask the teachers to like keep an eye out for like you know, unruly behavior. And they had this eye, um, what do you call it? The, like, the technology that can track your eyes. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember the exact numbers, but most of the time they'd be following the black children around other than the white children. And it's what just, the fuck? Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. and that's what Dang. we mean by systemic racism. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not even something that people realize they're doing. It's just ingrained in society. Yeah. It just that's happens. Horrific. Yep. I hate that. Harley, take number two, please. Okay, so people identifying solely as black or African American were 11.9% of the veteran population between 2015 to 2019. They were the second largest racial group of veterans after white Americans, and another 2% of veterans identified as two or more races. Your father. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my dad was in for 23 years, five months, and a day. That's impressive. Retired as a first sergeant. Um, I think he was promoted to sergeant major, but to keep the rank, he had to stay in even longer, and he was just done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he, he did 23 years in the military. He is black, Hispanic, so he would be one that identifies as two or more races. There you yeah. Go. Uh, number three, the voting rate for black Americans during the 2020 presidential election was 62.6% up from 2016, but down from the 66.2% in 2012. wonder what happened there. <laughs> wonder what happened there. <laughs> For yeah. those of you that aren't tracking the years, 2012 was Obama's second term. Uh, yeah. 2016 mm-hmm. is when Trump was elected. And when he was rerunning in 2020, black people were like, nah. <laughs> We've had enough of this. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, we messed up last time. <laughs> <laughs> we messed up. We we let it happen. Not again. Yeah. So there you go. There you go. Early. 66% of black women who are public school teachers report having at least a master's degree. Only Asian women at public schools reported having advanced degrees at a higher rate. That's so fascinating. That's pretty, cool. That's pretty good. Yeah. Overqualified. Oh. Yeah, dude. I didn't even think about it that way. They have Shit. to be. Yeah, no. That's another thing. Like, black people <sighs> have to be overqualified for everything we do. Yeah. Wow. Holy crap. I didn't even think about it that way. Mm hmm. Shit. I thought it was like we're just being. Oh, old. you can go get yourself a bachelor's and be a teacher as a white person and 
Nobody questions it. But you right. you need a master's or a doctorate to have the same equal footing. Consideration. Wow. Really. Even close to equal footing as a black person. Wow. Specifically a black woman. Yeah. And it's not even like they'll like try to pin it as like, oh, you're not qualified kind of thing. But like, well, they'll try to like no, pin it as that, even though you fully it, are. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, they won't try to make it seem like it's like a, a yeah. race thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. That, that's Which always horrible. It oh, it's not about race. It absolutely is. But, you know, moving on. Wow. Dude, that's why They're it's also so- severely disrespected in like public schools I mean, system. I'm- I love this. This is exactly why. And it's not just the school system either. It's any job across the board. Oh, yeah. Yeah, facts. But yeah, even but but that's also like kids are taught to like not respect Mm. their teachers who are black women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they have to maintain emotional integrity a lot more strenuously than anybody else because then they run the risk of being the angry black woman. Yeah. Anytime anything happens. Mm. Yeah. Ridiculous. Don't don't. I know we we made a, a joke in the last episode about don't get me started, but that is something that I could seriously rant and rave about for hours. About yeah, that's something women, that's like actually mistreated. Yeah. Frustrating. Mm. All right, uh, number five. Since at least two the year two thousand, black workers have been more likely to belong to a union than U.S. workers overall. In twenty nineteen, eleven point two percent of black workers were unionized, compared to ten point three percent of workers. Overall. Oh, wow. Indeed. That's frustrating. <laughs> it's really frustrating. Yeah. Because I didn't even realize, like, obviously, like, in your history classes, when you learn about, like, unions and stuff like that, like, occurring in, like, the 1940s and, like, the 20s and blah, 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 for, like, you know, basic workers' rights and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way they pin it is that they make it seem like that was such like a past problem. Right. Yep. And I did not realize until I got older that unions are still such a big thing. Yeah. yeah. Like they still exist because workers are just not being like treated right. And ex- especially because of race. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially in, especially in Southern States, frankly, because that's where most unions were even like, you know, created this and started America. was in the Southern States and they have to continue until this day. Right. 100%. Number six, Harley. Of all states, Mississippi has the largest share of black Americans as a percentage of its population. Uh, I looked it up. I forgot to write it down, but it was, I think, uh, 35? No. Well, that's not right. Yeah. It was was around 40%, I think. Mm. Well, that was based on who voted for who. So I don't know if that's the exact population, but it was around there. But it was high. I would look it up right now, but my keyboard is a bit clicky clacky. Click, click, it's a, click. Bit, a bit obnoxious, but um, that's number, very interesting. Yeah, that it's concentrated. Well, I mean, that's where that's where the plantations were, and that's where the yeah the, the slave trades were, and that's where all that and and then most of them couldn't move or you know live somewhere else yeah. after freedom and after um emancipation so after being promised their 40 acres and a mule and then not being given to them yeah mm-hmm. especially after um what year was that election harley the um 1870 something the where the troops left the south oh i feel like i want to say it's like 73 yeah Basically, that's what i want to say yeah all promises were like yeah forget that oh yeah cuz who was it it was mm. Jackson? No. Andrew Jackson? No. No. No, no, no. I can't remember who it was. But yeah, basically. See, I don't know my president, so I kind of suck as a history person. <laughs> I know it wasn't Grant. What no. is his name? Taft. It, it was It was a Republican president. It, the race was close, and they... We're talking about right after Abe. Lincoln. Not no, no, it wasn't right after. It was it was it, it was after Ulysses S. Grant. It was about ten well. years after, I think. Oh, okay. Well then are you sure it was seventy something? Eighteen seventy something? Yeah, that makes sense. Civil War ended in sixty five. Yeah. I mean here, you read the next one while I look it up. Okay. We sorry, friends, we need a little bit of a <laughs> clarification on our facts here. Um, number seven, 82% of employed black women worked full time in 2019. 
Oh, my God. Well, 77% of overall for, full-time employed women did. Mm. That's yeah. overworked. Yeah, underpaid, yeah dude. Overqualified. Under-recognized. Um, I did find the, it was 18. That's a huge number. It is. 82%. Um, the 1876 presidential election. Oh, okay. Uh, was between Republican nominee Ruth, uh, Rutherford B. Hayes. Rutherford B. Hayes. And Democrat Samuel J. Tilden. And essentially Hayes was given it because they made a deal in the Senate to get rid of Southern troops that were enforcing oh, okay. a new election laws and everything else that they had yeah. promised during yep. construction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because oh they goodness. were like, this is how the country's going to function now, and you, you have to make sure that you are enforcing these rights to, you know, freed people. Yeah. And then they were like, ah, just kidding. Take them out and let the locals run it. Mm -hmm. And then that's obviously when everything started to go to shit. Jim Crow laws and all that, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and it's also a reminder, especially like I mentioned earlier to those people who thought it was Republicans that freed the slaves. Um, yeah, kind of, but they weren't by any stretch of the means abolitionists. Or no, they, they were liberals. Yeah, it was just... Yeah. Some, somebody on uh, TikTok pointed out a really solid argument that I've, I've always thought, but it seems so obvious that you just don't use it. When people are like, oh, well, you know, Republicans are the ones that freed the slaves and Democrats founded the KKK. So what you're saying is the problem with a political party is how closely they are related oh, to the KKK. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah absolutely. <laughs> okay, so if you were to go ask no. a KKK member today to pick a political party, because that was back then, where would they vote today? <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, But then that was like Tim mentioned, like people forget all of the time that originally these parties had the opposite mm -hmm. of what we yeah, consider Republicans today's modern like views. Democrats were conservative. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it wasn't black and white. There were Southern Democrats who were the conservatives and there were also Southern Republicans. But it, it was just, yeah. it was completely But that was like world. when the change started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. New Deal and all the, the yeah. 30s and 40s. That's when it really started taking shift. But yeah. Yeah, and that's like um, when Chris mentioned like the whole the liberal thing. It wasn't like people forget that those who wanted to abolish slavery didn't do it because they actually believed that African Americans and black people in general were people. Mm. They did it because they saw it as a as a way to gain votes mm -hmm, and like yeah. keep them their place in office and like an the union. Yeah, it's and always stuff about like power. that. It, it's never about the little people. It's always about power. It just happened yeah. to work out for black people that time. Yep. Yeah. What, oh, oh, brain. <laughs> Sorry. Frustrating. All right. Since you had the last two, I'll, I'll finish this up. Um, number nine, black high school attendance. Uh, excuse me. You missed number eight. Yeah. You skipped eight. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, in 2019, 77.9% of black people with the advanced degree with an advanced degree, and 77.4% with a bachelor's degree participated in the labor force. However, 58.9% of black people with a high school diploma and 37.3% without a high school diploma did. So, yeah. What are we taking away from this? That the more educated you are... I feel like those are, are still high numbers. The more educated you are as a black person, the more likely you are to work. Yeah. Because... People don't want to hire, Un yeah, black people, yeah, in general. So it, again, it comes down to you have to be overqualified for anything you want to do. If we get to this next article, if you have time for it, it kind of answers a lot of why that is. I think we should include it in the notes, but I don't think we'll have time to okay. go through it. Um, black high school attainment was at a record eighty-seven point nine percent in two thousand and nineteen. That's a good thing. It's better. It's getting better. Was well, getting better. I don't know what it is now. Yeah. Yeah. How uh, often are these? Um, um, I would assume they're annual, but I don't maybe, know. Maybe not. But also with like COVID and stuff, that that's all of it would be skewed. Right. That's what I'm, I'm assuming. Um. Okay. Number ten. Last one. These hundred and seventeen. Oh, I'm sorry, Carly. You take it. Oh. Okay. 
Um, the 117th Congress has 62 black members, which is a record high, and they represent constituents from 28 states, the Virgin Islands and Washington, D.C. Yes. According to a January article from the Hill.com, the number so nice. of lawmakers in the 118th 18th Congress who identify their race or ethnicity as something other than white is the highest in the country's history. In total, 133 members of Congress identify as black, Hispanic, Asian American, American Indian, or Alaska Native, um, which is representing one quarter of the 534 voting members as of January 3rd, 2023. Which one is quarter, lovely to see. guys. Yeah. BT dubs, only one quarter. That's still... <laughs> not enough. Not enough. It's definitely not enough, but it is closer to the representation of the country. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, would you like to mention the next article, and I'll be sure to put it in the show notes? Yeah, so the next article uh, we were going to do, we're just kind of running out of time, was racial disparities can affect brain development in black children. Um, essentially, the it boils down to the way that black people are treated racially throughout medicine, education, work, and every aspect of life affects how they develop mentally moving yeah. forward in life. Um, so obviously they're treated worse in schools, they're given less attention, they're punished at higher rates. All of that can be very detrimental to the way that the mind develops, mm. which is why you see things like, well, you know, the prison to school pipeline. Yeah. Or school to prison pipeline. Yeah, school to prison pipeline. Where basically, like, this child has problems that in a white kid would be a developmental issue that gets attention. But in a mm -hmm. black kid is a behavioral issue that just gets punished. So right. it just becomes a reoccurring motif in their life where they do something wrong, they get punished. They do something wrong, they get punished. They do something wrong, they get punished. They become an adult, they do something wrong, they get punished, they get sent to jail. That's yeah. what it boils down to. Yeah. I think this can also even go back to Bobby Wilson. Bobby Wilson. Oh, hundred percent. She did something right, and she was still getting mm -hmm. yeah. like blamed for something. Yep. You know what I mean? And so that can, and how they were like trying to still enforce in her, like, hey, even though this thing that, occurred, like that please one guy keep your sucks, love. and mm -hmm. the situation is rough. It's hard out here for black people, but please stay the course you're on. Right. Follow your love for STEM and. We're going to do everything we can to support you. Mm. Yeah. It's literally the opposite of what most black people experience, mm. which is really sad to think about, but it is great that it is happening now. Yeah. Yeah. So, but there's, that, um, that I article. took a course. Oh, I can't even remember what it was called. Criminology, I think is what it was called. Um, that studies like, you know, the, like what Chris had mentioned, like the, the pipeline and mm -hmm. stuff like that and behaviors of children and what that means and stuff like that. And even statistics that we looked at in class all the time constantly showed that people of color were at like at a disadvantage yeah. because yeah, of the, the punishment, like they're constant, they're just, there's no room to give them an opportunity to change their ways and grow. Mm. Instead, it's literally just, punishment which is they're sent to like juvenile schools and things like that it, yep. it doesn't teach them what to do differently it just teaches them that what they did was bad yeah and that's that and it, it boils more into not what they did was bad but who you are is bad mm. yeah it, it's not just something that you did once that was awful and you're gonna learn your lesson it's like everything you do anytime you try to do anything it's bad yeah. you're wrong yeah it's like what Go ahead. It just like, and they'll never be able to like get out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is what it's really enforcing. It's like, why do you think people who get out of prison can't vote anymore? Like, the, it's just a continual. It's a continual punishment. It, it's a continuous. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, <sighs> please, guys, both for all these articles and everything else, please go check it out in our show notes. Uh, I will we be are, sure. To we are including it. a lot of links. Um, I, I included a couple of links to the books that were written on this on the topics that we discussed. Um, obviously, we'll have those statistic links as well. The last article that we're skipping over, Tim will include all the articles and everything in the notes. So check them out. Get deeper into yeah. this. Whether you want to discuss it with us or you just want to have the knowledge, learn more about it. Yeah. Because yeah. a country who 
does not know its history is doomed to repeat it. And yeah. whether you want to admit it or not, the U.S.'s history sucks. Yeah. We're the worst. <laughs> U.S. is awful. Slavery, colonialism, just all this stuff. All this. Every, everything. <laughs> um, It'd now, be really cool if we could just, you know, learn, <laughs> but we don't. <laughs> But we don't. You know, uh, it's fine. Once we get rid of the older people that are in Congress and in political office, I think we'll be okay. I don't know, because a lot of them are Gen X. Gen Z is giving me hope. Yeah. I think we'll be all right. Yeah, this this last election, Mm -hmm. it wasn't perfect, but it definitely shed some light on who this younger generation is voting for and what they want. And as long as they don't get lazy with the voting, then I think... Yeah, we'll be okay. Yeah. I don't even, I don't think it's a matter of even getting lazy. I think it's a, just a matter of giving up because they don't see change happening. Good point. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. Also I, true. I, I meant to say, like, as long as they keep consistently voting and, like, or, or participating in that process, because you're right, there is a hopelessness that can be affected. But yeah. I think hopefully what this last election showed people, like, I guess around your age group that voted was like, no, your vote can absolutely make a difference and it will yeah. make a difference moving forward. So. Yeah, we Facts. just need better, no printer, better candidates to vote for. That's the thing. And less redlining. Yeah, dude. Gerrymandering. Anyway. We will also. <laughs> oh, go ahead. I was going to say we're we're probably going to post on like, um, social media for stuff for Black History Month, more facts and more yes. cool things. Oh, absolutely. Stuff like that. That's absolutely. The goal. So, we'll be reposting a lot of stuff. Amen. Um, but we are all done with our main segment. Don't go anywhere, though. We will be right back from another break where we have some fan questions and fun stuff to talk about. I'm all about this lo-fi intro music, man. Mm. I'm here for it. I recently discovered Lord of the Rings Lo-Fi. Bro. Bro, it is. It's, it's game changer. When I get back into school, what's going to be on all I've the got, time? I have a playlist of Lo-Fi that's basically just movie soundtracks, uh, a couple of pop songs, video game soundtracks, all Lo-Fi. Yeah. I love it. Mm. Yeah, um, my favorite thing is turning, like, songs that I know into, like, Lo-Fi songs. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's just, like, the the grooviness. Like, instrumental, but, like, more lo fi E. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I definitely get so that. So good. I feel it. Mm. All right, guys. Well, welcome back from our other brief break. Definitely not getting paid for that one. Um, <laughs> this this next part of the show we're going to do is fan questions. Yes. And before we continue, <laughs> I we made the mistake of saying that we would answer any question. <laughs> and... We are we are true to our words. We're gonna do it. <laughs> we're we're absolutely gonna do it. But this question, um, you, you he's your friend. Friend is a loose term. <laughs> we know each other from Whoa. high school. No, I mean I, I don't have anything against him. He's, he's an all right dude. Just it, it was a left field question. That's all. <laughs> are we ready? So we got this as a voice question, and we're just gonna. Play it for you guys. So if you have small children, <laughs> I would suggest getting them out of the room <laughs> soon. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Hit pause. <laughs> All right, let's go, Tim. Yo, I had a question for your podcast. Uh, <laughs> you, said, you, said, you said we could ask anything, so I'm going to go ahead and ask anything. Um, and this is a question that I brought up on my show several times, and I keep getting conflicting answers, so I thought I'd ask a bigger source of people or whatever. But And again, you said anything, so let's say – you're having a nice, quiet night at home. You know, the kids are at the grandparents' house. You know, you've lit some candles. It's you and your significant other. And your significant other comes to you, and she's like, Chris, you know, we've been together for a while. I love you. Uh, I want you. We all know I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I just, I just want to take our relationship to the next level. Is there any way that I can put a tarp down, lay you down, and just take a hot shit all over you? Like, it would mean, it would mean the world to me if I could just get that level of 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 connectivity with you is there any way that i can just take a hot cleveland steamer on your chest for my gratification uh, did you love me enough to let me do that to you and i'll clean it up the, you know the tarp's already there i already paid for the tarp 
I got if you have carpet, I got a I got a Stanley steamer fucking thing for you. So there you go. Yeah. So um, there's that question that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, I'm going to answer this honestly. Uh, Janelle and I have had that discussion. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Hear me out. Whoa. Hear me out. Just because of the question. Okay. Oh. After, <laughs> after we got that question. <laughs> I thought I knew you both. <laughs> <laughs> after we got that question, I had to, like, I, I could not keep that to myself. I had, if I had to hear it, she had to hear it. So we had that discussion. Um, it, what it boils down to is that 100% she would not even ask that. That's not even a fleeting thought in her mind. If she did, I want to say no, but I, I do love Janelle so much. And if it truly meant that much to her, I, I might, I might agree. It's, it would definitely take some convincing. It would 100% take some convincing. And I would not enjoy it at all. I'm not into that. That, that The thought of it makes me gag. <laughs> but if it truly meant that much to her, I think I would do it. And that, that's where it lies in for me. Is it, it, there would be a condition... Like we're going to therapy to talk about this. Oh, we're, thousand we're, percent. That's going to be talked about in therapy. Like we're we're getting to the root of this. Yeah, like, thousand. Why, why do you have this, a shit kink? Why is this so important to you? Why did I not know this before we got married? Yeah, like that. That's something you discuss. Like, hey, I know we're going to spend the rest of our lives together. In the next few years, I might want to shit on you. Yeah, like <laughs> we may have to cross that bridge <laughs> at some point. Because. <laughs> There's just no way that's just coming out of like left field. There's there's, there's got to be something back there. Like, like I said, he he's asked people this before. This is he has his own podcast as well, and that's a question he asks on his podcast. Why? I don't know. <laughs> what, what's but his name again? That that's Denmark. Denmark. <laughs> um. Yeah. So to answer the question, short answer, probably I wouldn't enjoy it, but I probably that's so. But crazy. that's not something I have to worry about. She has zero desire to do that. It, it, and for the record, I have zero desire to do that as well. That like <laughs> it's not gonna go the other way either. Like that's right. that's not something either of us are into. There would there would have to be <laughs> so much therapy and there would have to be so much conversation and possibly a bribe. Um but Yeah, no, that, me, that's a hundred percent that's a hundred percent a quid pro quo. Yeah. Mine's hard pass regardless. You're like, I love you. Uh, uh, we can figure out how to show our affection in other ways. Uh, I'll buy you some flowers. <laughs> Do something else. Uh, sounds like somebody doesn't love Hunter as much as we love. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> See, but that's also like, I'm a woman. I fair. don't want no, a fair. man that, yeah, that's, shitting on me. That's a different yeah. thing. Now, here's a real so, question, Harley. Do you think Hunter would say yes? That's a great question. Is he still there? I don't know. Ask him. Ask him right now. Bring, Hunter! Bring him in. Just, just hey, can I shoot on your and chest? You, and you have to set it up completely like the way he did. No, no, no. Just, can I shoot on your chest? Right. I don't know if he's got headphones on. Oh. Hunter! <laughs> can you come here? Hunter! <laughs> Guys, for, for, is he coming? He is right here. Okay, oh, I here have a question go. to ask you. Here we go, guys. <laughs> Buckle in. I don't know if he y'all can hear him. Um, Have him get up next to the mic. Oh, come, come. Be in the show. Do you want to be on camera? Okay, come. You may, you may not want to. For this. <laughs> you may not want to for this one. Bring your face down. <laughs> We're just here for your chest, Hunter. Thank you for standing up. <laughs> I love that he can't hear y'all. That's my favorite part about this. <laughs> um, okay, so the, we just got a fan question. <laughs> She's holding him the shoulder. <laughs> and... And the question is quite bizarre. <laughs> you want to hear it? Yeah. Okay. If one day <laughs> we're we're together, we got to probably be together for many years. Um, if I came up to you and I was like, and I was like, 
Hunter, I love you I so much. I can't even Just fathom. repeat after me. Repeat after me. Hunter, oh. I love you so much. And I said, Hunter, I love you so much. This has been the happiest time of my life. <laughs> this has been the happiest time of my life. And I just want to take our relationship to the next level. And I just want to take our relationship to the next level. Is there any way? Is there any way? That I could lay you down. <laughs> that I could lay you down. And just take a hot <laughs> shit on your chest. And take a hot shit on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> I'll clean it all up. We'll I'll put clean down it a tarp. Up. I got a tarp and everything. <laughs> but it would no. mean the world to me. <laughs> but it'd mean the world to me. <laughs> like it's something I really love. For like my I own would gratification. For... He's shaking his no. head no. no. For... <laughs> yes, no. 100% no, Hunter? No. 100% no? 99. 99. There you go. So there is a, there's there, a, there's a sliver. Ah. <laughs> I would need something great in return. That's See? what Tim said. See? Did you hear him? Yeah. Yes. No, that, that's exactly what we're saying. 100%. Yeah. They All both right, said that. They said we need something, you know, now, it's a two-way street. Now, for Harley, though, that was a I'd hard pass. I'd be happy to give you what you want, but I need something in return. <laughs> so for Harley, though, that was a hard pass. Do you think it's just yeah. that men are more depraved than women? <laughs> so for me, I said it was, I was not like, I would not let you shit on my That's chest. I said it? Yeah. hundred percent. No. hundred percent. No. <laughs> <laughs> Look how dejected he feels. <laughs> That's why her hand is still on his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, just, no, I couldn't, I could not. But my point was that this question the, oh my god, my headphones. The person who asked it was a, a man. And so the, you had similar responses like Tim and Chris. <laughs> and so my point was, is it because like I'm a woman that I'm just like, I would not allow that no. to happen. But you're a man, so you're like, you love me, you know? And it's like kind of like a... I would do anything for love. What do you think? I think I just don't want to be shit on in general. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. That, that's fair. Yeah, I get that. But I same. Could <laughs> see. Same, same. You're so sweet, Hunter. Best boy. Thank you, sir. I wouldn't. I wouldn't shit on you though. It's still ninety nine percent though. Right. I wouldn't ask you though. So, all is well. Not yet. In the world. Nice. We'll see. Thank you for your input. We'll see. Okay. Y- y'all are still young in this relationship. Who knows? Tim said, y'all are still young in this relationship. <laughs> no, not okay. until you try it. Okay, Thanks, man. Bye. Thank you. Sorry. Love you. Thank you. I have no apologies sorry. for Hunter. Chris, he says he's not apologizing for anything. I love shit questions. Hunter says, I love shit questions. Oh, good to know. Good to know. <laughs> all right. Well, Demrick, there is your answer from all four of us on the Always More podcast. In the first appearance of Hunter. Look at that. Yeah. That's what brought him in. Hunter. That's what brought him in. Shit brought up. I don't know how to feel about that. Right, we're going to have a discussion after this. We'll have our own therapy session. <laughs> we're all going. Group therapy. <laughs> always more therapy. Because we will always need more therapy. Amen. I do. Oh, that's good. That's good. I do think it's very interesting that y'all said there was like a little bit like maybe but we need to have like <laughs> well, look a there's discussion. there's rules there's boundaries there's got to be quid pro quo there's got to be a reason and it's got to be the person i love the most in the world i would right. not just let some rando take a shit on my chest that's it mm-hmm. yeah it, it, it's a 99.9999999% no but if there is a such a heavy thing on that person's heart that makes them want to do that. Then I'm going to get to the yeah. the deep, dark, smelly pits of it. Pun intended. Right. Uh, and so I just, yeah, yeah. It, it, and then maybe that point one percent, like, mm, yeah, may. We could also talk about this for kids, though. I'm sorry. Like, um, because <laughs> that's obviously us? more of like this question is more of like a romantic, like question. If your kid shits on you, yeah. Not obviously asking, like, hey, dad, can I shit on your chest? But, oh, like, I say they, already have. You know, they have, like, an accident. 
Yeah, you know? that, that happens. That yeah. 100% of the time that happens. But that's accidental. That's not on purpose. It, and it has nothing to do with sexual gratification. Yeah, but then there there is parent there are parents out there who'd be like, my kid cannot do that. I'm going to be livid, like, da, 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 like super pissed off about it. You know the, what I mean? They are out there, yes. But nine times out of ten, as a parent, you just kind of accept the fact that it's going to happen. Yeah, Jess, mm. Jess was you like... Get, you get mad about it. You Obviously, it, it's still disgusting. You have to, like, scrub your skin until you bleed. But <laughs> it, it's going to happen. Yeah, before we had kids, Jess was like super like anti any kind of throw up. Like it's like she basically mm. like I'm sorry if you throw up, but I can't help you. But when it came to the kids, it was like okay, like you, you deal with it. Mm. You know, right? It's like a different kind of love. Yeah, a hundred percent it is. <clears throat> All right. Crazy. Well, there we go. That's our. Uh, Thank you, sir, who <laughs> submitted that. Sorry, everyone that's listening to this episode who chose to listen to this episode. <laughs> it's a good. Uh, it's not good, actually. Let me take that back. It's um something to ponder over. For those who I guess are it, in it is indeed a question. It's a good party yeah. question. I'll tell you that. It is a question. <laughs> that was a question. It's a good high question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Close this I out, mean, Chris, this is dude. a pod about having like crazy three AM conversations. That's you know true. What I, mean? I guess it does fit. Mm, Unfortunately. Yeah. No, it, it definitely does. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that has been our fan question section for the week. I apologize to no one for anything. <laughs> Final thoughts, guys? Period. It's Black History Month. You don't have to apologize for shit. Amen. Literally, I don't. Mm-hmm. I got two months of you guys not having to apologize for anything. Got Black History Month <gasps> and then Women's History is next month. And Pride Month. Hey, yo. Yeah, yeah. Get into it. Yeah. I get two months out of the year. <laughs> Isn't October also Pride Month? It's it's a uh, what was it? What was it? The, the debated. Oh, we did talk about that. Yeah, yeah. I thought we were doing that this year. We're making it Pride Month. <laughs> we're two Pride to, Months. Try to change it. Two, two or just add months. to it. Here you go. Just add to it. Two Pride Months. You get two. Um, just three months. Ooh. Final thoughts. Black History Month is important. History is important. Um, Black history is history. Amen. Yeah. Uh, um, I will say this. I really loved the moment that you spoke up and said about you know, black women having to. To show more and do more to be accepted uh-huh. even in a because that was and that's why these conversations are so important that's why black history month is so important is because mm-hmm. there is always going to be especially for people like myself who are white and male who's they just don't have they don't have all the perspectives yeah they don't have all the understanding you and, can only view the world through the lens that you have right it's, yeah and so it, it's extremely vital for for people of privilege like myself to constantly be in a state of wanting to learn and to know and to understand and to seek that knowledge and to yeah. humbly uh go into it and and assume that it's like it's like it's like what you said earlier we may not all be individually horrible people but we are in a system that is horrible we are in a racist system and so until we can address that with humbleness and with um with with with, with the, the manner of wanting to look out for our neighbor then we're not going to grow. So it is, this history is vital and important. So um, for all my people who are not history fans, take take this month, take these other months that are that are designated and designed to point you in the direction of those who are not in privilege to focus on those times and actually learn some things. Yeah, I really enjoyed the, I re, not even enjoyed, but appreciated the input that Chris gave on those facts because it was like we could state those facts all day long, but it's the actual input and the impact that those facts yeah. bring and the statistics the cultural carry. meaning yeah. behind them. Yeah. 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 What, what that fact means. Yes. Right. And how it is applied in everyday life. Um, Cause I, as obviously a white woman do carry more, more privilege than like black women or any person, like any woman of color. And as someone who supports other women, that is something that I should know so that I can continue to support them in the, in the ways that they need to be supported because we can't be supported in the same ways when things are not equal. Yeah. And so I feel like it's so important to know those things and be willing to learn those things constantly. And it's not even like all history, like is not boring. People forget that all the time. Like there's so many interesting things to know about history, like little quirks and stuff like that. Like, that people just don't bother to care about, but yeah. that's 
like Tim said, that's what months like this are for to learn those things and like peak your interest. Even yeah. if it's like something very specific, like whether it's like technology or like science or literature or just anything, there is something to be applied when it comes to black history because black history is history. Yeah, so. exactly. Well, it's like even what I think you said earlier too, Chris, is it's not just the history, it's the current culture that, that uh-huh. is just as important. There, there, oh, are, yeah. there, there is so much that is happening now that we need to be aware of and concerned with and to be in relevance with. Yeah, because that's yeah. going to be history at some point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look. I mean, even oh. just like Look at you guys. the 20, 20, <laughs> 2010s are history technically now. Yeah. Crazy. Look so. at you guys. I got some good white people. <laughs> All right, guys. Ally. Well, <laughs> ally. <laughs> ally. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for listening to the Always More podcast. Um, just want to say that we love you guys so much. We appreciate you being yes. here. Uh, so thank you all for listening. Make sure to subscribe, like, share, give us a five star rating on all the five star rating apps and ten on ten stars. Um, your favorite platform for podcast listening, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at the Always More or at Always More Pod. Tim, where can we find you? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at, at Timothy Lichty and at TikTok at Tim Lichty. Harley. You can find me on Instagram at what Harley, W-U-T Harley, and on the clock app at HarleyBean.co. And I am on Instagram as Captain underscore CT Ford and TikTok as Christopher.Lionheart. Thanks again for listening and being part of the conversation. And remember, there is always more than this. Bye. Peace. Bye.